This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, everyone. If you just arrived and you didn't hear my notice from before, uh, we're going to be having a look at this question, which falls under resisted motion uh, but pro projectile motion, which we started on Tuesday. Um, please take a screenshot of this question if you have not already and have it there on the side because we'll be um, yeah, scrolling past it fairly quickly. Now I want you to recall, uh, on Tuesday's lesson, we had a look at projectile motion with resistance. Uh, and one of the cool things we experienced about it was number one, it lets you solve cool problems. We were just having a look at that um, video of the Curiosity rover and the physical problems, the challenges they had to solve um, to enable that, that um, rover to land. And I hope many of you went and watched the video, the full thing afterwards. Ironically, it's called Seven Minutes of Terror, but I think the, minute, the video is actually like five minutes. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, one of the things you might recall is that we were having a look at um, situations where the um, aerodynamic drag would be directly proportional to the velocity. So um, you would have some situation whereby um, x double dot equals minus k x dot, something like that, right? Um, and so we, we could expand from that. When you have a look at it vertically, you also have to take into account gravity and so on and so on. Um, one of the things we said though was that you might not have it um, proportional to velocity. You might be proportional to the square of the velocity. And you can see that's one of the things that's being highlighted in this particular question we're going to have a look at today. So um, I want you to read this along with me and we're going to highlight starting with that idea of quadratic uh, drag. That's what this is called. And we're going to highlight the things that are different about this question, um, even though it's really the same concept that will help you learn a few different things um, within projectile motion. So let's get started. A golf ball is designed to weigh 46 grams. Okay, we're going to go through and as we often do, uh, let's highlight the pieces of information that are going to be vital for us to, to write down and take into account. 46 gram golf ball, it's designed to experience a drag force that is proportional to the square of the velocity. And I hope some of you had a look at some of the extra examples that were provided online. Um, if you don't, if you've had like plenty to focus on, especially with remote learning, I hope you get to look at them later. Um, but I particularly want you to note the drag force, so not the acceleration, the force is proportional to the square of the velocity and there's no mention of mass. That's important. We'll come back to it a little bit later on. Uh, its terminal velocity under the force of gravity is found to be 44 meters per second. So when you hear that, that sentence there, um, you can just imagine an object dropping from rest and you know it's going to be pulled on the force of by, by the force of gravity uh, but it's going to be resisted by you know air resistance for example in this situation and eventually those things are going to balance and there will be no more acceleration experienced by the golf ball so it doesn't get any faster it reaches a terminal velocity or at least it approaches that okay all right so now we have two questions it says calculate the drag coefficient k for the golf ball and they've given us a gravity constant uh, value. And then secondly, and this is important, I just want to highlight this before we move forward, just so you can see the, the difference in the character of this question compared to what we had a look at on Tuesday. Then we say, okay, golfer strikes the ball so that its initial speed is 60 meters per second. All right, let's just note that first. Initial speed is 60 meters per second. We've already noticed the difference with this quadratic drag model, which is that it's not proportional Drag is not proportional to velocity, it's proportional to the square of velocity. So there's a point of difference. Here's another point of difference to that question we were having a look at before. If you recall, we saw that, um, I think we provided you a vector, um, an initial um, vector of projection. So it was like 15i plus 30j, something like that. So you knew exactly the direction that this thing was going and not just the magnitude of that force. But in this case, um, you only get given an initial speed. So you're going to need to do a bit of resolution of forces here to work out what's horizontal, what's vertical. So again, we'll come back to that when we do part B. If it is airborne for 4.53 seconds, that's going to be important and lands 155 meters away, calculate its angle of projection. Okay, we haven't even started this question yet, but I just want you to notice this question is kind of like the question we looked at on Tuesday, but completely backwards, right? We knew the angle of projection uh, and what we had to find was things like, well, where do we land? Um, how long are we in the air? These were the questions like after we go up, how long does it take us to come back down? We're now asking, um, given the opposite amount of information, uh, we're being asked to calculate these different kinds of things, which used to be our starting point before. So same kind of situation, we're gonna use the same knowledge, um, but you can see all of these differences here. 
All right, um, I hope we've noticed uh, all of these differences. So now let's actually get tucked into the question, part A. We're trying to calculate the drag coefficient K for the golf ball, and they give us this helpful clue that we're gonna to need to use gravity to do this, right? So have a think about this. I want you to go back, and maybe you've got your notes there and you can refer to them. How do we work out something like um, terminal velocity? Terminal velocity is really to do with just vertical motion, right? So as you read the beginning of this, we're just gonna think about a vertical journey first, and terminal velocity occurs on a downward journey, not an upward journey, right? Um, the term terminal velocity, like the velocity you terminate upwardly is zero because eventually gravity stops you, right? We're talking about the downward journey here. So we need to think about, well, at what point does terminal velocity occur in a vertical situation? And the way that I would um, denote this, I sort of flagged it before, is that if we have, there's gonna be some vertical velocity, um, and I'm gonna call it uh, vertical velocity with a T for terminal, um, it occurs, as I mentioned before, when our two forces balance out, um, vertically speaking. So there's the gravity force pulling you down, and then there is the drag force pushing up against you. So um, I guess we could denote that with, say, the force of gravity. At some point, that will equal, or we're going to approach equaling, um, another force, and that's the force um, owing to this quadratic drag thing, right? So I'm gonna call that D for drag. So when these two things are equal, or when you add them up and you get a resultant, a net force of zero, that's when we should be reaching uh, terminal velocity, or at least approaching it, right? Okay, so from here, all I need to do is think about, well, um, what, what does this expression actually look like? And then let me punch in the appropriate numbers. So when we think about the force of gravity, maybe you can just type in the chat, um, what's that going to be equal? Like, how do we calculate the, um, the force, the weight force um, owing to gravity? I'll give you a clue, it's just two letters and I'm starting you off nice and uh, easy so you can post something simple in the chat. Go ahead and type it, it shouldn't take you long. Yay, hooray, okay, thank you very much. We've got uh, a couple of early entries in there. Um, though someone's direct messaged me because they're not sure and that's okay with me. Uh, it's just gonna be the mass of the object, which is why they told us how heavy the golf ball is, multiplied by whatever um, you know, gravity constant we're determining to use, 9.8 in this case, um, 10 in other questions. So there's the force owing to gravity, and then let's think about the drag force, right? Now, they tell us that it's going to be, if you go back to the question, uh, proportional to the square of the velocity. So when you hear proportional, you know there's gonna be some constant that we're being multiplied by, some constant coefficient. And then when you say, well, um, normally I'd have, say, like, y dot here, but this is not the velocity, it's the square of the velocity. So therefore, I'm gonna have, and just be careful with your notation here, right, y dot squared. Okay, um, and you can see here, I'm not worrying too much about what's positive and what's negative because I'm just thinking about magnitude, right? And knowing that mass is positive, gravity is positive, this constant coefficient is gonna be positive, and I, if I think about this as a downward journey, I can just consider y dot as a positive. It's gonna get squared anyway in this case. So this is what I'm after, okay? Now, think with me for a moment. Uh, what are we trying to find and what do we know? Uh, well, the unknown is the drag coefficient k. That's what part A says. Everything else is known. We know the mass. We know what gravity is. Um, and this y dot here, right, um, I can say that actually it shouldn't just be y dot squared. It should be uh, y dot, oopsie daisy, y dot t. It's the terminal velocity that's going to get squared, and that's when everything will balance out. So that, I know, the question told me it was 44 meters per second. So I'm going to give you a brief moment. And I'm gonna let you calculate this, but I'm just gonna warn you, there's a teeny tiny little trap if you read the question carefully um, that is, is sort of tucked in there. I'm gonna give you a clue when you go ahead and calculate this, and please, you're gonna need your calculator a lot for this question, so just a warning ahead of time. Um, can you please give me, this is sound ridiculous, but trust me, can you please give me six decimal places? I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to get ahead of me. Uh, I'll give you a clue. I'm going to be making K the subject and then you're gonna to have to put in all the rest of those things. If you've got an answer, um, if you're not sure, you can direct message me, but if you're willing to just put it out there, go ahead and chuck it in the chat to everyone. Can you go ahead and work out K for me? Use your calculator to help you. I've gotten a question uh, here, which is what about fractional form? Um, interestingly, actually, I'm not sure if, actually, I'm fairly certain that is not the fractional form that I got, uh, I don't think. Um, but, uh, 
you could, I suppose, provide the fractional form. Um, I'm going to go for the, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm gonna go for the decimal because it's gonna end up being easier here. We're gonna have a lot of fractions flying around if we do go with fractions, so go ahead and do a decimal. Uh, and yes, of course, I mean, in terms of the further working, this is part A. Um, someone, you know, Zhao's asked, should we, you know, can we just keep it exact? Um, I'm, I'd encourage you to actually keep it exact in your calculator, like store that value and then um, substitute it in within your calculator every time you use it. But um, we're going to be actually having to write a lot of this. So I'm going to suggest you don't um, get a decimal so at least you get a sense of the, um, uh, the magnitude of this thing. And yes, as Mrs. Lees points out to the question of, you know, uh, what is the mass? The mass is given to you as 46 grams. But I want you to have a think about well, what the rest of the units assuming, right? Like we're talking in Newtons, right? Newtons is a sneaky unit because it actually includes units within it, right? Um, it's, it's comparing two different things. So I want you to have a think about what's appropriate here. Let me just fill in a little bit. You can see here to make K the subject, I'm just going to divide both sides through by a bit of a mouthful. Y dot T squared, that's the terminal uh, vertical velocity. There isn't really a terminal horizontal velocity. And my mass here, this was the little curveball, is in grams, right? So we're so used to just putting in kilograms and just uh, putting in whole numbers, etc. Um, but if it's 46 grams, it's going to be all of 0.046 kilograms um, if you divide by that uh, 1000. So that's what I'm putting in for mass. My gravity of course was provided as 9.8 and then my terminal velocity is going to be 44 but of course I square that. Okay, so yes, <laughs> that's why that's why we had different units there. So what I was getting was, um, and I asked for six decimal places because you want to get some actual significant figures there. Um, I got 0 0.000233. I actually got, uh, let's see here, 232851, etc. So it, it continues on from there. Um, so that's what I've got for my uh, drag coefficient. So I'm I'm done. Okay.